Hi, I'm Daniel Braithwaite, the Senior Director of Cell Design and Manufacturing at QuantumScape. And I'm here today with Giovanni Flores, our Senior Manager of Battery Safety and Mechanical Reliability. Safety is one of the most critical performance capabilities of any battery, and we take it very seriously. Our battery cells must be able to pass strict industry standards before they can be used for any application. So today, we're excited to share some product safety testing updates with you. We've also published more details on our website, so make sure to read our blog at quantumscape.com. Now, I'm excited to share an update on our safety testing using energy-dense 24-layer prototype cells based on our Alpha 2 design. Before we get into it, there are a few things to note about our testing. First, these results are based on testing of our prototype cells, not our final cells. These prototype cells are on the development pathway to the QSC5 cell, our first planned commercial product. Like the QSC5, these cells combine a lithium metal anode with our proprietary ceramic separator in the flex frame format. Second, product safety is a function of a cell's properties, which may vary from one generation of cells to the other. But we want to share these early results with you today because we believe that they indeed are still very relevant and a promising indicator of the strength of our safety performance. And third, we will continue testing on a larger sample size to ensure statistical significance, as well as on a larger suite of battery safety tests, because no single test can prove a cell is safe. With that being said, we have three examples to share with you. And the first is a nail penetration test. Giovanni, can you tell us how the test is set up and what happened when we ran it? Of course. For this test, the cell was fully charged and held in a fixture while a stainless steel nail of a specific geometry penetrates the cell at a specific speed and to a specific depth. As you can see in the video, the nail begins to move towards the cell and penetrates the polymer pouch, establishing contact with the electrode stack. An internal short circuit is confirmed as we observe an increase in the voltage of the nail and a slight but gradual rise in the cell temperature. These changes persist while the nail remains in the cell. Upon removal of the nail, the cell begins to cool back to ambient temperature and the cell voltage gradually recovers. The results are pretty uneventful. We use the hazard level classification, which is common in the automotive industry. They go from hazard level zero, which is no effect, all the way to hazard level seven, which is the worst case scenario. In this case, we scored a hazard level two. It's important to mention that safety testing always involves some kind of overstress, whether it's thermal, electrical, or mechanical, that goes beyond the normal operating condition of the cell. Because of this, we assume all tests will cause some damage to the cell. So getting hazard level two is about as good as it gets for this kind of testing. I might also take this opportunity to add a little more detail about how to interpret the results of this test. The obvious way of thinking about it is just to consider literally what happens when a battery gets punctured with a nail. However, the nail test can also be viewed as a proxy for what could happen if there somehow was an internal short circuit inside the battery, like from a manufacturing defect that penetrated the separator and caused one or more layers of the anode and cathode to come into direct contact with each other. At that point, you could have a lot of current flowing through the region, causing internal heating, which could then initiate side reactions that increase the heat even more potentially leading to a catastrophic positive feedback loop known as thermal runaway. That can potentially result in a high hazard level outcome for the test. So we're really happy to see that our initial nail penetration testing is showing a low hazard level. Okay, so that was nail penetration. The second test was external short circuit. Giovanni, can you take us through the setup of that test and what happened? Of course. For the external short circuit, the cell is again fully charged and held at a specific temperature for a half hour before proceeding. Then the positive and negative terminals of the battery are connected through a very low resistance pathway, held in that condition and the results monitored. In the case for the 60 degree C test, upon initiating an external short, there is an observable surge in current lasting approximately 30 seconds, reaching a maximum of 341 amps. Max temperature of 99 degrees C at the cell case is detected, resulting in visible expansion of the cell and eventual release of gases. 
The cell is observed to recover voltage after the test. To provide some additional context, this test results in the immediate discharge of the cell and release of the cell's energy, generating heat and causing the cell's temperature to rise. Again, possibly triggering thermal runaway. So we're happy to see that the result here was also low on the hazard scale. Last, but certainly not least, we wanted to share a test result for thermal stability. This test measures a battery's resilience to the onset of thermal runaway. So a higher thermal stability means a battery can be subjected to higher temperatures without having a high hazard level outcome. This is important because in the event of a safety incident where a battery releases a lot of heat, it's crucial that the neighboring batteries can withstand the heat without themselves going into thermal runaway, which could propagate into a chain reaction. Depending on how a cell behaves in the thermal stability test, the vehicle pack designer might need to add additional or fewer countermeasures to ensure the safety of the overall product in the field. Okay, so Giovanni, can you take us through the setup and results for thermal stability? Yes, absolutely. A thermal stability test typically starts with a fully charged cell alone in a test chamber. On the left, you'll see a commercially available 2170 cylindrical cell with conventional lithium ion chemistry inside. This is a mainstream cell that is pretty widely used in the industry today. And on the right, we have our quantum scape cell. At first, the temperature is raised to 60 degrees Celsius. Then it's gradually increased to 130 degrees Celsius. As we continue to heat, we observe the cylindrical 2170 cell go into thermal runaway. Flames and sparks can be seen coming out of the top and bottom vent. The event lasts about 10 seconds and fills the test chamber with gas. At this temperature, the QSL does not exhibit any dangerous behavior. As it continues heating, the cell demonstrates moderate swelling before the laminate seal softens and releases that pressure. To push the limits, we then continue to ramp the temperature from 200 to 300 degrees Celsius. At these temperatures, the QSL appears to expand, forcing the pouch to open a little, and the inner layer of the laminate material begins to melt. The test concludes with a low hazard level outcome. Okay, thanks Giovanni for taking us through the results of the thermal stability test. We're really excited about this result because being able to offer a cell with better stability at high temperatures means that automotive manufacturer customers using our cells can potentially take advantage of this behavior and make their battery pack designs smaller, lighter, and more cost-effective while still maintaining the same or better safety performance in the final application. So we just shared initial results for three tests using energy dense 24 layer prototype cells based on our Alpha 2 design, a prototype on the way to our upcoming QSC5 product. A battery is by its very nature, a highly reactive system that contains a lot of energy. And so there can be no such thing as a perfectly safe battery. However, we believe it's possible to improve the safety profile of conventional lithium ion battery technology. We believe our ceramic solid state electrolyte separator has the potential to simultaneously offer both an improved safety profile and better energy, power, fast charging, and cycle life when compared with existing high energy EV batteries. We also believe there's room to improve our safety profile even further and we will continue to build, test, and refine our battery designs to achieve these improvements. Thanks to Giovanni for helping show everybody what we've been up to, and thanks to you all for tuning in and following along on our continued progress.